Good evening and welcome to the May 8, 2013 uh, board work session of Richmond Community Schools Board of School Trustees. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, we are ready for our statement of mission. Richmond Community Schools mission. Graduate students who are literate, responsible, proficient in state and national standards, and college or career ready. Thank you, Aaron. And now for our vision. Board vision, by 2020, Richmond Community Schools will be the highest performing school system in East Central Indiana. Thank you, Dixie. Oh, I'm just... And now public commentary. Uh, we offer uh, two times for public commentary, one at the beginning of our meeting and one at the end. Do we have anyone signed up for public commentary tonight? None. None. Okay. We are now ready for snapshots of success. And for our first snapshot of success, um, I would like to ask Vivian Ash Maui to come to the podium. Jeez, I didn't even recognize her. I didn't. <laughs> hey, Vivian. Hi there. Vivian Ash Maui, for all those who may not know her, and I don't know who that would be. <laughs> is uh, our director of, C of Communities and Schools. And for the last few years, last couple of years maybe, maybe even three, um, the Richmond Education Association, and Wendy Bennett is back there representing the, the Richmond Education Association uh, president. Uh, the Richmond Education Association and the Richmond Community Schools have jointly, during Teacher Appreciation Week, recognized communities and schools. Now that may sound like an unlikely recipient of recognition during Teacher Appreciation Week. However, if you think about it, the reason they have been recognized is that at least in Richmond, Indiana, and I'd like to think across the country, the people who work in our communities and schools um, work to make it possible for our teachers to more closely focus on their profession, which is teaching and working with, with students. And for that reason, the Richmond Education Association and the Richmond Community Schools have not only teamed to recognize, but also to um, make, a, make a little presentation. And so we have Vivian Ash Maui with us tonight. And I understand, Mrs. Morgison, there is a resolution you're going to call to be read. Yes, and we would like to ask Jeff Slifer, our secretary, to please read that special resolution. <clears throat> Whereas the teachers of Richmond Community Schools prepare students. <laughs> it gets in the way of the laptop. <laughs> I'll start over. Whereas the teachers of the Richmond Community Schools prepare students in our public schools to meet high standards of performance be lifelong learners and contribute as world citizens and whereas school year 2012 to 2013 <clears throat> has been a challenging year of transition and adaptation in Richmond Community Schools and whereas the Richmond Community Schools deploys and cultivates community partnerships such as community and schools and the Boys and Girls Club to support the work of teachers and the welfare of students and whereas the Richmond Community Schools, through its commitment to continuous progress, contribute significantly to the development of this community's economic vitality, and whereas teachers motivate and encourage our children to succeed academically, artistically, socially, athletically, and whereas teachers mold the behavior of students to their own behavior to resolve conflict successfully, take risk with new ideas, model accountability as a standard of adult responsibility, and whereas Americans' teachers touch the lives of our children and weave the thread of democracy throughout our country, therefore, be it resolved, 
We, the Board of the School Trustees for Richmond Community Schools, do by, <coughs> excuse me, do by, <coughs> or do hereby proclaim May 5th through 11th, 2013 as Teacher Appreciation Week. Further, be it resolved the Richmond Education Association and the Richmond Community Schools recognize and commend communities and schools for its work to support the work of teachers by addressing the needs of students. Dated May 8th, 2013. Now, I need a motion for us to accept that resolution. So Aaron Stevens makes the motion, and Kelly Baumgartner seconds the motion. Uh, any comments or questions? Thank you. Yeah. You're here. <laughs> exactly. You know, um, Vivian CIS has become such a, a focal part of what we do each and every day that um, we just really depend on <laughs> CIS in so many ways. And um, so you are certainly uh, needed and appreciated. Thanks. So thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Now against that backdrop, uh, Wendy Bennett, would you like to come up to the podium as well? Linda, I think you have a presentation. <coughs> <laughs> That's right, I forgot. <laughs> On behalf of Richmond Community Schools, the Board of School Trustees, and REA, we would like to present you with $500 for CIS. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I think the genesis of that <laughs> amount, though, is important. Why, why does that happen at this time? Why does it happen at this time? Mm -hmm. Didn't the money come from uh, REA and Richmond Community Schools thinking that that's the best way of spending a recognition amount well, or something this week? Because, because CIS makes possible teachers to focus on their on their profession on the <coughs> students um, and that's why that's why that's happening um, it should also be noted <coughs> that this co this school corporation reorganized itself for among other things to sustain the programming for CIS uh, CIS was being supported through grant dollars those grant dollars are now gone uh, but CIS is here and um, will be here next year as well. And I should also say we're working hard, a group of, a group of us, at the state level to create a state CIS uh, board, or not board, but office. And um, in working with the national CIS today, the spokesperson said to us that um, we are fortunate in this state to have Vivian Ashmauer. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you. Thank, thanks, everybody. Um, and you know, it, it is—it's an honor and a privilege um, to work um, on behalf of our teachers and our students. And and you know, it's, it it is really about um, the community coming together. And um, we're honored to be able to be a part of that. And and um, really appreciate the support that we get from um, the administration and the teachers. And I, I guess I just I really need to thank our um, site coordinators. Um, they have the most challenging job of all. Um, you know, they're there day in and day out um, working with the students and families. And um, I think most of the time they do it with a smile, even though um, sometimes it's a challenging um, position that they find themselves. So um, I, I really want to thank our, our staff and thank everybody um, for the opportunity for us to continue to work together. And um, it, it really is a community effort, and, and we need the community to continue to support um, our collaborative efforts so that, you know, when, when I first started with CIS, they used the visual of a safety net. 
and you know it's about strengthening that safety net so no child slips through the cracks and and it does take all of us and and we're um, proud to be part of that so thank you all Vivian, very much. while you're up here I know that a part of the CIS is called the PALS which is um, parents Parents as Leaders, um, one of the, the projects that we've um, been able to um, engage as part of the Safe Schools Healthy Students Grant is um, an opportunity for parents to come together and um, to, to learn some more confidence and some skills and, and the opportunity to learn more about what um, educators and administrators go through and, and to then think about how they can be um, proactive um, support persons for their kids and, and other kids and other parents in the community. And so, well, we I know had, you just had the year end celebration. Did, and it was it was uh, it was pretty powerful, and it was it was an awesome opportunity for to see parents and their children actually working together and engaged together. And um, so, you know, we we have a very hopeful future if we can um, continue to to build those supports. Thank you. So, thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> you can't cash that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you but you should that. try just because it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> just take it to all the banks <laughs> in <Yeah>. Richmond. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are now ready for our action items. <clears throat> Mrs. Stewart, would you like to recommend our next action item? It's actually a calendar <laughs> item. Calendar. Okay. Uh, count, a request for 2012-13 school calendar change. We did not use, we will not need to use a snow day, I hope, between <laughs> now and the end of school. So we're recommending that we have the last teacher day be Friday, May 24th, instead of Tuesday, May 28th, which falls after the Memorial Day holiday. So uh, that's the recommendation that that change on the calendar would impact the teacher calendar only. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. Um, motion made by Pat Heine and seconded by Kelly Baumgartner. Comments or questions? Doesn't change the student year at all it's just that those last teacher just impacts the teacher and I think the teachers are looking forward to for us to approve this so all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed same sign motion carries the other action item that we're <coughs> requesting tonight is for uh, second reading and adoption of policy section 8000 which is operations and we're recommending as posted to the web Okay, I need a motion. Aaron so Stevens, seconded by Dixie Robinson. Comments, questions? I'd like to thank um, the group that worked on this, including Jeff Slifer and Pat Heine. And Dr. Bohr. And Dr. Dr. Bohr. Well, yes, that's <laughs> for sure. And we're ready for the next one. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. President Morgison. Yes. I do have an addendum. Is it appropriate to add an action item, an action addendum at this time? I posted to the. Is this. Um, is this in regards to human resources? It is. Okay. And was it posted? Mm hmm. Okay. So I have to read so it. So we can okay. do that. Um, okay. The following action item is submitted for your consideration at the meeting this evening. Paid administrative leave of Edward P. Weatherly for May 3rd, 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's recommended that the board approve the paid administrative leave. Okay, we have um, a motion by Jeff Slifer, okay. seconded by Suzanne Derangowski. Comments or questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. We're ready for our 2020 vision. We have two, uh, two recommendations that I will let Mr. Coddington review with you and Mr. Mays is here should you need more information. Thank you. The Dennis Intermediate Building Renovation bids were received Wednesday, May 1st. Notice to bidders was published in the plating item on April 10th and 17th. 
Therefore, that we recommend that the Dennis Intermediate Building Renovation Bid be awarded to Carroll Electric of Richmond, Indiana, at the low base bid of one million six hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars, plus add alternate number two for water coolers in the amount of ten thousand dollars, and alternate three to add the bus driver drive lane in the amount of one hundred eighty-two thousand dollars for a total low bid of $1,889,000 meeting bid specifications as presented. Okay, we have a recommendation for the Dennis renovation. Do I have a motion? Motion by Dixie Robinson, seconded by Suzanne Derangowski. Comments or questions? I was glad to see him add the drive, bus drive. I think mm -hmm. that, was, that was needed, so. Good. Safety is number one, obviously. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, the Hibbert HVAC boiler upgrade bids were again received on Wednesday, May 1st. Bids uh, to, was published in the Palladium Idol on April 10th and 17th. Therefore, it is recommended that the Hibbert HVAC boiler upgrade bid is awarded to Quality Plumbing and Heating of Bunker Hill, Indiana, with a low base bid of $456,000, plus alternate bid one for the AHU-1 replacement in the amount of $66,700. Those are air handler units. And the alternate bid two for the air terminal unit replacement in the amount of $87,700. For a total low bid in the amount of six hundred and ten thousand dollars, meeting bid specifications as presented. Okay, we have a recommendation for the Hibbard HVAC. So moved. Motion made by Aaron Stevens, seconded by Kelly Baumgartner. Comments or questions? Where's Bunker Hill, Indiana? Where is Bunker Hill? It's near Kokomo. Near North of Kokomo. 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 Mm -hmm. Between Kokomo and Peru. It's part of the I must base. say, I don't believe I've ever been there. Mm -hmm. I think quality has been used. Go up 31. Crest yeah. were you being used at Crestdale, too, right? We've used them. Yeah, we've used them before. They were one of the sub. Okay. Steve Hill will be doing all the electrical work and the wiring for all the units. Okay. So we do have local participation. Local sub. Okay. Good. Yes, uh, Mr. Cross. As we go through these uh, that are related to the bond project, it's a good idea to keep the be mindful of our budget. So uh, as Bob and I were just talking, it appears that our Dennis bid came in about 72000 over our projected budget, but our Hibbard project came in about 82000 under. So as we go, we're, Very we're, good. Still, we're, we're still on, on track. Okay, good. Thank you for those comments. Okay. Uh, we are ready. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion <coughs> carried. We are ready for our press conference. Any questions from the press? I'm <laughs> 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 <You're> liking this <laughs> uh, quick board meeting, aren't you, Brian? Just, just a joke. <laughs> okay, Brian rolling, wants me rolling. to keep right on moving. Keep on rolling, I think is what he said. <laughs> Okay, we are now ready for the <laughs> consent items. Consent items tonight include the approval of the April 24th, 2013 board meeting minutes, recommendation by Human Resources, and there is an addendum as posted to the web. Uh, summer athletic camps, recommendation to approve summer athletic camps, uh, a recommendation to approve the Richmond High School Orchestra summer camp, and a recommendation to file reports involving uh, parent involvement. Okay, do I have a motion to accept the consent items? Um, motion made by Suzanne Derangowski, seconded by Kelly Baumgartner. Comments or questions? I'll tell you what, hearing the orchestra yesterday. Yes. Um, wonderful, wonderful job. So that summer camp can do nothing but help. Mm -hmm. Well, and if we add to that, Mr. Z was one of the rising stars. The mm -hmm. teacher's been here three years or less, and so yes. that would just indicate why he was a rising star. 
and they were also dressed in their new outfits. And yes. they look so very sharp. professional. Didn't they though? Yes. Great. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We're ready for our second public commentary. Anyone wishing to speak? No. No. Okay, moving right on to our follow-up old business. One item of old business, and this is really old business. Um, it's probably been brought up maybe two or three years ago, maybe longer than that. The Overbeck tiles, which used to be in the Joseph Moore School, Mm -hmm. in the Bundy Chapel um, have been framed and actually displayed at the uh, Indianapolis Museum of Art. They've come back and they're now in the museum mm -hmm. and they are in a really nice uh, exhibit specially made for the uh, Indianapolis showing and we have been requested by the Richmond Art Museum to consider gifting that piece of uh, art to the museum it would, of course, be on permanent, I shouldn't say permanent loan, but it would be permanently accessible to the Richmond Community Schools. And so I'm not recommending that tonight, but I would like for the board to be aware that that recommendation may be coming very soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you would like a special uh, showing of that, that piece of art, we could also make that happen as well. So Certainly like seems appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it. Well preserved that way, too. <laughs> And we know where they are. <laughs> we know where they are. <laughs> okay, any other old business? Okay, we are ready for superintendent and board reports, ref reflections, and celebrations. I need to, I need to, re, uh, uh, to re, wanna reflect on, uh, maybe report on, some outstanding work that took place Sunday morning. Glenn Slifer is one of our... Uh, maintenance supervisors and when you get a call from Glenn on Sunday morning <laughs> it's not good news <laughs> and he called Sunday morning and it wasn't good uh, something had happened with a transformer an RPL tran <clears throat> RPNL transformer uh, yes. and Civic Hall was down and out totally without power and we had a three o'clock symphony mm -hmm. uh, concert almost a sellout crowd and so we had people who were working with our p l feverishly to make that happen. And to make a long story short, we were up and running. But I want you to know that when we came back online, it must have done something to the automatic features of some of the air handlers. It's beyond me to understand exactly what, what that was. But I will tell you that our people were behind the scenes, literally, using screwdrivers to make sure that every 15 minutes oh that goodness. automatic feature of the air handling was making air move conditioned through Civic Hall that would have been to miserable. the comfort of almost 900 people. That's, that would have been miserable. Uh, Guy Bordeaux, the, our, uh, exa our music director, uh, recognized those, those people. Um, and of course, Connie Woldridge, who is the president of the RSO, made a similar recognition. I am tonight. Uh, we owe a lot to those people for coming through on a Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning and afternoon. Well, yeah. we certainly thank Glenn and all the people that helped mm -hmm. to make that happen. Um, Pat? The, the difficulty with May is that every day there's something happening, either with students or teachers or staff that we should celebrate and at the risk of leaving anybody out let's at least just recognize what happened yesterday in our two very important celebrations the celebration of excellence for uh, teacher of the year Denise Selm who is also high school teacher of the year elementary teacher of the year Melissa Hunteman Jordan uh, administrator of the year Richard Bryant from Dennis friend of education Leslie Bolser and Brian Dare, uh, co-directors of the movement at the high school and support person of the year was Mike Rogan, all ably put together by Alicia and her committee. And then just prior to that, we didn't even get to go home, the ninth grade graduate together 
uh, featured students, excellent student work, and including a graduate, Aisha Bowen, who presented just unbelievable uh, presentation and speech to those ninth graders. That's just representative of all of the cool things going on, the band, the orchestra, and a number of things. And I, I would commend our board member, fellow board member Dixie Robinson, who has tried to be at everything. So Dixie, what would you like to report? <laughs> well, I just want to say how fabulous I think the band and orchestra is. You wouldn't believe the number of awards that the orchestra is getting. They have improved the participation rate 33%, which is wonderful. He's got orchestra back on a roll. They looked great and sounded wonderful. And the <coughs> band, I was so impressed with the young kids. And they said part of that is because we have band <coughs> kids who can now take band every day with our new um, configuration of five through six. And the difference that you hear from last year, it's just amazing the, the how good they sounded. Normally sixth grade, I'm kind of sitting there like, <laughs> like that. It's like we but love they're you, but really you're good. Sound good later. They're really good, <laughs> yes. So I think it'll just continue to improve. They were all great. Okay. And then, Suzanne? Um, I think we haven't had a meeting since the high school open house, have we? No, we have not. That was another one of those. And again, there's so many other things. But just because of the enormity of that, <laughs> I think it's worth mentioning um, and the number of people that needed to pull together to make that happen. The traffic was great. Um, and it really uh, gave people who came a picture of all the possibilities that exist within that, um, that school. So I want to just say that was really outstanding. Well, and of course, all this happens because of our great teachers and staff, which we are certainly celebrating this week. So um, thanks again to um, them for an outstanding job. Anyone else? Okay. Well, I think this is probably a record. <laughs> We have one for 27 <laughs> minutes one time. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, I did not. Try. Something to shoot for. Not in recent history. Aaron, I said that's not recent. <laughs> Kelly did that. Okay, meeting adjourned. That one?